is to Melissa Couple. To what? Come on. <laughs> I heard Melissa Couple. Melissa <laughs> Couple. <laughs> huh? What did you say? I said I'm Melissa Couple. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm on the list a couple. <laughs> I like Melissa <laughs> Couple. <laughs> like, damn, boy. Oh I've been watching <laughs> lately. <laughs> I would never do that. watching Dahmer. All right, we are live. This is Los Digitals, episode 0000000. 000 000 000 000 000 000 000. You guys ready or what? Yes. So technically, this, is gonna, this was supposed to be filmed on my birthday, which is two days ago, right? Yeah. And because of travel and a lot of plans, Jazzy had a game that day. So we weren't really able to put this together. So this is technically my birthday podcast. Happy birthday. Or belated. Um, just want to say thank you for being a great dad. Always, not only like a great dad, but a mentor, a teacher. You know, I think out of like all my years in school, even now, you're like the person I've learned from the most. So, yeah. Um, thank mm -hmm. you for always being there, even though there was times I did not like you. <laughs> honest my job is not to be liked <laughs> but yeah you you're right you always put like my my safety first so i appreciate that even when even when i didn't see it so thank you for that i love and you boy you were blind we know <laughs> let's not get into that so i get into that let's, thank you baby thank you for the words kind of like um what jordan said to touch on Like how you're really confident in us um i really appreciate you having that like um that self that belief in me when i didn't like when i was at my lowest you still believed in me you, you still to this day believe i can do anything i want that's right and i don't know if it's because of that i th i used to, i used to, i thank god that he gave me like the way i think and the way i i am because like there's like the way i grew up i should not be thinking like the way i do and the way i put like you know and i think it's like god's gifts but like me thinking about it, it's like what Jordan said, like you have that confidence in us and it gives us that confidence and that like self belief that we can do anything we want to. And it feels like we really can, like we can accomplish anything we want or like that we put our mind into. And we're really grateful for you. Yeah. Thank you. you and what I said, I'm on the day of your birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. Huh? Jenny, I have a question for you since you're like a female and you're like of age. Okay. What are, what are your thoughts on Andrew Tate, the top G? <laughs> Free top G. Free top G. Free top G. No, but like, what do you think of him? Like, what do you like? Jordan, what do you, I can't see him. He just lean out like me. I'm, I don't what do you think he stands like? What do you huh? think? Uh, when you think about Andrew Tate, what comes to mind? I think. Like, he's really trying to help other people. Don't get us canceled, bro. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. No, I, I really do think he's trying to <laughs> help other people, especially young men who are, like, depressed and, like, don't know what to do with themselves. And I think that's really important because I think society nowadays wants to see, like, weak men. They do. And, yeah. like, because he's trying to, like, I guess empower advocate. Them. Yeah. And empower men. People don't like that. Especially, like, people of power don't like that. He has that type of influence on men you know people like just society in general and like i think that's why they're trying to put him away and i don't believe what they're saying about like what he did to like young girls and stuff. like i don't believe that because like it just it just doesn't make sense it would go against everything he believes i mean this is a different country it's not in the u.s but yeah it's pretty much like they're he's guilty until he's proven guilty innocent. until proven innocent not the other way around yeah and um whether he whether he's done whatever he's done we don't know because you know, only he knows what he's done and the people around him, but... Like, for example, like, um, I used to listen to Rex Orange County and, like, a couple months ago, it, like, it came out, like, oh, he has a bunch of, like, allegations against him and, like, I stopped listening to him and, like, mm -hmm. it personally, like, it made me really sad because he was an artist that I would, like, listen to on a daily basis. Yeah, and recently? No, I haven't listened to him. You know, he, there was allegations, right? Like, the, they've been dropped. It was, like, false. Oh, for real? Yeah, you didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. You, just, you were about to put this man on, on oh. blast for no reason? I, mean, I wasn't going to put him on blast, but I was just trying to like put it in like in the perspective. That's, like, that's the whole point. Yeah, that's the whole point is like, you can't judge people based on what you hear about them on the, on the internet. 
Yeah. They're only based on what you've experienced from them. Mm-hmm. So, like, for example, when I listen to Andrew Tate speak, there's a lot of truth of what he's saying. And how yeah. am I supposed to hate? How, how am I supposed to hate him when he's saying things that are. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Why, how, so when somebody gets mad, like I've shared a lot of stuff on my socials. Yeah. And people get people send me DMs, direct messages like, oh, he's like an ex I don't know. They call him different things. But a misogynist. Misogynist. Especially. And like, prove it to me, you know, because you're saying it based on what? Yeah. Yeah. And um, at least I haven't been in that part of the, uh, I know like TikTok, for example, like there's people that are stuck on different parts of the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I used to be stuck on that part of the internet. I deleted TikTok. I haven't had TikTok for like months now, so and I think especially because of that, like my mindset has changed so much. Um, it was at work, mom. This is this week. There's um, so I walked into the break room and I was like sitting down, and this fucking, this, I'm sorry, excuse my language. This wow. guy, uh, one of the coworkers, one of like the front of store. I work retail. One of the front of store uh, attendants. He was like, "Oh, your role models in uh in jail." I was like, what are you talk who are you talking about? And he's like, Andrew Tate. I was like, like what like why is he saying it like that, right? So I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, don't you support him? I was like, um and like what do you have against him? He's like, Oh, it's just uh personally I wouldn't recommend people watching him and stuff like that. And I like well, for me I think he's a I think he's like, he has a big influence on a lot of young men and that are trying to so like the people that watch him and like truly understand what he's saying and like, dissect the things that he's saying they're like it's very like what he's teaching these young men to do like self-improve um and, or like how to be a man basically how to be a man to simplify everything i'm trying to say like that's what andrew tate is saying like that's his that's what he's preaching like how to be a man and this guy was like well i wouldn't recommend that but if if that's helping you improve by all means go ahead and i'm not look i was fat this guy like trying to hate on Andrew Tate or like, you know, like not even trying to hate on Andrew Tate, but like, like, I don't know. He's like, you know, you can just tell he's like not happy inside. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, yes, man, to everything. Like people were like, oh, like if you agree with something, he'll agree with it. You know, like he's like that. Like I don't talk to him or personally like know him like that, but like off that conversation, like he's agreeing with all this fucking bullshit, like on the media, you know, like, and like, oh, he's a masculine man. I like, he has these allegations against him. And I was like, well, I think he's like, he's a great influence he, on these young people. He thought he had man. you. Like, huh? it was going to be like an aha, uh-huh, like, yeah. You follow this. I mean, I think everybody's waiting for that. Yeah, like, everybody's hoping that this is true. Yeah. Everybody's like been praying on his downfall. Yeah, which is kind of sad if you think about it because it's just a man. You know, it goes back to our Christian values, like how you, you're, you know, like the whole idea of like only God can judge me and like you're supposed yeah. to. Uh, forgive people I'm not saying that he I mean I don't know what he did that's the thing we don't know what he did it hasn't been hasn't really like sh- they haven't really like showed yeah exactly. but I'm not gonna dog my co-worker because he supports yeah. him or whatever like yeah especially yeah, yeah, if I try. don't have that relationship I'm actually um I don't know like when I first started I said uh they were talking about him like oh yeah he, he's funny I like because I, I already knew about him but like I didn't want I already knew how people think and I'm like I'm, I'm new to my work and I was like I was new to, I was like new to the job like, oh, yeah, he's funny. They really took that to heart. And, like, the whole, like, the whole story, like, a lot of the people, like, most of the other girls are, like, oh, like, you're, like, like I'm a toxic, I'm a toxic masculine man. Um, I'm an Andrew Tate supporter. I, I don't understand how being an Andrew Tate supporter is, like, a bad, like, it's, like, they paints me in a bad light because yeah. of that. And I'm, like, like you know what? I don't care. Like, it's, that's what they think. They, and then the people that know me personally, they love, like, all my coworkers in style, they love, they're like, oh, we're going to miss you, Jeff. Um, we love you. Like, like they were telling me that, like, you know? But, like, um, as I'm doing, my, when I'm, as I'm going about my day and I have to go, like, to the front of the store, I was getting, like, this reshop. So, like, reshop's, like, <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is. I was, like, just basically doing my job. And then one of the front of store attendants, like, just looking at me, and she's, like, what a disappointment. I'm, like, the fuck I'm like what I'm like what do you mean by that I'm like, yeah you support andrew tate <laughs> i'm like oh, i'm not gonna get into this at work <laughs> i'm not gonna get into this at work yeah you gotta be careful i like i like my people are very passionate about this they are very yes and like yeah he's raped women i'm like where did you see that 
it's so it's so weird how people can easily like say that right like they say it? like if if it's if they saw it like themselves they saw it firsthand yeah he raped like she was so confident in saying that like where'd you get that and like oh this news outlet i'm like what news outlet like he like tiktok <laughs> what's the like what's the it wasn't even a mainstream outlet this was before he got arrested <laughs> this wasn't even a mainstream outlet it was just a fucking random article by a random person and i was like i like i'm not gonna argue with this yeah that's not worth person. it that's funny but yeah, I think, I think a lot of people. I think he said he did say some outlandish things, but it was like I guess it was. I think it was he was trying to be funny and get the clicks, but then he does say some things that are made, like can be taken out of context because people just clip stuff and they put it on. Yeah. On, you know, on TikTok. Those videos that like the parody videos that they make of him, those are funny though. Like the one <laughs> like, like oh one. This, this is your top G and it's like dancing <laughs> those are funny. Oh, it's like a random guy dancing. <laughs> it's like a like random bald guy, guy dancing. Yeah. Does it, he does He's all zesty. Purpose. Top G thought it was, I mean, Andrew Tate thought it was funny too. Top G. <laughs> well, yeah, Top G. Yeah, is but that, it goes is to that show. Like like, nickname or what? Top, top G, G is, his, that's what he calls himself. I'm the Top oh. G. Now everybody wants to be the Top G. It's kind of like a thing, you know. But it okay, goes to show that you got to be careful who you listen to on social media because yeah. people can stray you away uh, easily. We're crazy. I can't. <sighs> So I've been like on a rabbit hole, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, know, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it right now. But <laughs> let's not, let's wait for that for the next episode. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. What is a woman? What is a woman? Oh my god! Yeah, but let's not, let's, wait, wait, no, we're not talking about that today. No, 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 no. Not talking about that today. That was also part of the argument. I was like, oh, like um, he started talking about pronoun. Like, I don't know how I got into it, but like, I like if a, a man's a man, like, look. I'm, we were talking about like how Andrew Tate. Like I'm a, I was like, I'm not an asshole. I don't. I'm not gonna put like if you don't respect Andrew Tate, I'm not gonna push my beliefs onto you. Like if, like what he preaches, I'm not gonna push that onto you. That's your that's your opinion. I'm not gonna push my opinion onto you. Yeah. Just don't push your opinion onto me. Like your and that's so what he was like. Well, you know, like he was just going around, like he was just sugarcoating everything. Like bro, stop, shut the fuck up. You're a bitch. And then <laughs> he was like, and something about the pro like for and I, I gave him an example. Like if you're a man and you feel like a girl. Sorry, how do, I, how do I not get taken out of context? If you're a man... It's going to be taken out of context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, about, you're about to get canceled. Keep Never going. mind. Never mind. If you're if like, you're yeah, man, like, if you're a man and you you class, like, you're, you're still a man, right? You still have everything as a man. And you're like, oh, I feel like a woman. I'm a she. I'm a, I'm a her. I'm a she. To me, you're, you're a man. You know? I'm not going to, like, call you a woman. Like, you're not going to humor them. Like, yeah. Like, not that, not that. And I'm also not going to disrespect them. I'm gonna be like, okay, like, I'm not going to disrespect them. That's what yeah. I was, like, meant. But he took it as, like, I don't know what he took it as. And he got, like, he got, he, I couldn't see. He got emotional. It's like and when that's you don't, when I just like, because, like, you don't agree with them. You're, like, against them. Yeah. You're trying to call you Toxic masculine men. Like, no, like, I have beliefs, too. And you have your beliefs. Okay, I'm not going to. It's okay, like, you know, so. But it's, like, not even true. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we all have to respect how people perceive themselves. and, um, But when it comes to, like, for example, sports is one of the things they spoke about, right? There's all sports. these all these men now playing in, in women's sports. See, that's where it's, like, Winning okay, <laughs> how do we... How do we How's that? How's that fair? Imagine LeBron James played in the WNBA. <laughs> Hell <laughs> no! I mean, yeah, think about no. it, like, or like, just like, and for example, like, what if a man was playing with your daughter? You know, like, what if a, a whole boy, like a whole man, was playing against Jazzy? Mm -hmm. the fuck? That's not fair. No, but like, why? Like, why are people like that? Like, I don't understand. Like, why we'll leave that for another day. Like, yeah. they really defend. He well, was, we're living in this gender and. In an era where it's easy to influence younger people right now yeah. more than ever before because back then when your your mother and i were growing up like it was the, only, the only people that could influence us were sure. our parents and our, and our friends right and our friends weren't that smart because we weren't that smart we were all kind of like at the same like level right and then yeah. we would so watch parents. tv and it was like mostly like sitcoms novelas, novelas. <laughs> like there was really no like direct day-to-day -day influence you guys are listening to influencers all around the world all around the world and you have access to that information instantly and you don't get to process what's truth and what's not truth yeah. so there could be a huge population of people that believe that they're martians just because somebody said that they're martians you know and it could be a whole movement the wolf 
the, the, the fairies. Wolves, the wolf fairies. <laughs> like, yeah, this that's what's happening. I really haven't Stop. studied much of it, but like, that's, the truth is like, you guys like um, are going through a harder childhood because you get access to information that... Yeah. Like, or like yeah. when they make like the books about... That I have a question. Do you think also like you know how you would tell me don't put emotion into things when I do like oh go take out the trash, ugh you know like back then I would be like ugh and I'd like go work out and I'd be like oh my god I have to go through this hard ass workout like I'd put like a lot of emotion to it and you would mm -hmm. tell me don't put any emotion like, just don't like, don't think about it just do it and like that's a lot that's like a, another thing that changed throughout this whole year I didn't do it and if you notice that's what Andrew Tate also like preaches like don't like, as a man you gotta like know when or like know how to control your emotions or like know when to feel like you know. Mm -hmm. And I was the, my question is, like, do you think an emotional man is, it like, a dangerous man? Or, like... You got to know how to channel your emotions towards your outcomes. So, for example, yeah. if if you get emotional about putting on your socks in the morning, <laughs> like, lose the emotion of putting on your socks in the morning. You get emotional about uh, getting, you know, going to work because you need to, or doing a task at work. You got to remove that emotion so you can complete <sighs> the task. But, the, yeah, you got to remove those emotions from from that but emotions are powerful because if like for example with me when i was your age all of you guys age and i wanted to can you stop that just oh, i really like i was very emotionally invested in making it because i knew that if i didn't make it you guys were gonna have a, ch a tough childhood so i used my emotions to support my ambitions I was able to channel that fire energy through through like the emotion of like if I if my son will ever ask me to like I want to go on a field trip and I and I say no because I don't have money that emotion is gonna kill me so I rather use that emotion at that even though it never really happened I was I want to channel that emotion from the future to make me do what I need to do right now and that's why I never fucking took days off I lay straight up never never once even thought about it. I'm like I need to go. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, so I was using emotions when I needed them, but I was not putting emotional emotions to to a task. Yeah. You know, like if I had to stay up all night. I was like, all right, I'm gonna stay up all fucking night. I remember Let's that. go. All night. Let's fucking go. And um, yeah, there was times where I didn't. I wouldn't sleep right, babe. Like I would go on three days with no sleep because I was going to school, running two businesses, and had a full time job. And um, well, I wouldn't sleep for like three days. I really like was a full time single parent. Yeah, Monday Still through Monday to Thursday, I would like I would go to sleep on Monday morning, wake up, and then uh, all the way to Wednesday night, I wouldn't go to sleep. What the heck? For like at least a year. How that? I no, was, that, that wasn't really my question because like we were talking about the Andrew Tate thing. It was like. <laughs> No, I answered like, it though. Added. That yeah, you, you answered it. You had a badass it. answer, but that was not the question. <laughs> what I was trying to go into, like, um, how weak, like Andrew Tate was saying, like how weak men are really dangerous. Like for example, there's like this is a real example. Um, this this guy, I don't know, like you can research it up. Um, a guy that was dating this this female, right? She was like a stripper, she, like cheated on the guy, and what he ended up doing was killing her. And she had kids, and, she, and he killed. The, and then he killed himself in front of the kids, because mm. he got, let his emotions get the best of him. That's yeah. what I mean by like emo, like controlling your emotions or like if they're dangerous. Oh yeah. Well, ideally, like emotions are. Are it's emotion is the thing that triggers us to go above and beyond or do things that are out of our our like norm. So, for example, jazz. Like when you. In the first quarter, why do you play different in the fourth quarter? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because um, I'm, like, warming up. You're, like, like you're chilled. Quarter. But once yeah, a girl tells you something from the other team yeah. or hits you, what happens? I get mad. You get mad and you start playing more with more intensity. You're Now you're trying to get the other girl. Like, now you're, like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's the same thing with, with us. Like, emotions can, unfortunately, like, can control um a lot of your actions and if you can't control your emotions then you're a person that's dangerous but in, in I not feel the right like ways that's why we would always tell you more specifically because you were always so emotional like and you're like you were either really happy or really 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 mad like you let your emotions 
mm-hmm. take over mm-hmm. and sometimes it wasn't for the best so i would that's we would i would all, even in high school when you went to high school like in jersey and then back to the radio i was like don't let your emotions Be get the best of you because like you have a very strong character so i was afraid that it was gonna Mm-hmm. Like if somebody would tell you something, I would, like you could you could easily take it the bad way and just <laughs> no. get into um, it. What was I gonna say? Also, like that's what I'm saying. Like all these people, like this new media, t- telling men to be emotional, which is oh, not right. not like yes, you can be emotional, like but like then like it goes back to what Andrew Tate was saying. You gotta learn how to like, like control control your man. emotions. Yeah. Well, there's a difference between being emotional and showing your emotions. So, for example, you're happy. You can you can be happy. You can show that you're happy. If you're sad and you want to cry, it's okay to cry. It's not it's not actually good to just hold it in all the time. That's okay. But like being emotionally driven to do things, especially like when you when the emotion hits you. So, for example, like. Somebody tells me that they don't like they don't like me or whatever, and I get emotional, and all of a sudden I want to physically get in the altercation. altercation with them. Yeah, that just set me back so far behind because I'm gonna be in jail all of a sudden. Like maybe I kill the kill the guy. You never know what ha- was gonna happen. Maybe he kills me. You know. It, yeah. Possibly not, right? But <laughs> ideally, like you don't want to be acting on emotions, and that's why it's you know it's very important for you for you to have like a um i guess a a practice of a way for you to funnel that energy so it could be something that you're ambitious about a goal that you want like talking about your marathon like instead of acting upon somebody i told you something like channel that all right i'm gonna go on a you know 12 mile run today i'm gonna crush it you use those things to be able to funnel those type of emotions but i do that yeah i think too many people are just hanging out not doing anything it's like what are they they have so much time to think about who they're mad about yep what they're mad about and who who do they got to tell off today well i have a question for jordan you don't mind me asking jordan i know what what you don't even know what it is like because i know last year when we first moved over here you were like very alone (laughs) (laughs) everyone was right okay yeah yeah I don't know how to word this question. We were all alone. Yeah. Like, how do you, like, do you see a big difference from your mentality last year to this year? Like, from junior year to senior year? Yes, I do. Like what? I don't know. <laughs> like, for example, like, um, like when Jenny was in here or like, like what changed? I don't know a lot of things. I don't know how that's that question. <laughs> well, how did you feel last year when we first got here? You, we moved in the middle of your high school years. The be- beginning of his senior year. No. Before he's, his... The he was a, he has, no, mm-hmm. you were going to be a junior. Yeah, but before that, he had, he had... It was COVID, so he didn't go to high school with her, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So your first, like, high school pretty much experience was here here at this new high school right yeah how was that for you like no friends it was boring Losing. i never wanted to you should dress up you don't have friends either <laughs> i had friends. i never I wanted to go to school you didn't go to school you missed a lot <laughs> you missed like 40 days <laughs> hey i'm in the senior year right surprisingly so then yeah what, tell us more <laughs> i need to remember last year because you might put it back to the back of my head. Or, like, my question was, like, do you notice the change, like, as the, the person you were last year to this year? Yeah. My hands feel great because of you. And what, what do you think changed, like, what changed for you to make, like, that change? Um, having fun. You had fun? Yeah. You made new friends, started, li- like, living life? Yeah. I actually started going places <laughs> and just having fun. Last year I did have fun. Only when we would all go out somewhere. And yeah, we went out a lot though. Yeah. Once a week. It was like a ritual, like every weekend we go out and we would do also cook together. out every week. 
cook out every weekend. Yeah, little face. Yeah, and then Genesis was out. <coughs> oh, yeah, Jenny wasn't here. Jenny yeah. wasn't here. How was your college experience, Jenny? It was fun. Yeah. What happened in your college year? Huh? What happened in your college year? I ran cross country. It was fun meeting new people. But I don't know, it just didn't work out. So I came here. <laughs> what do you mean, no? <laughs> what? Why'd you say? Because mm. it didn't work out. Oh. <laughs> How has been your experience here in, in this new city? It's been like. Lonely but fun. I think it's like the loneliest I've ever been, but it's like the most I've ever learned too. So I think I've learned like a lot about myself this past year and like mm -hmm. who I am and who I want to become. So, yeah. You think that would have been harder like, like say in Laredo where you have all your friends and your family there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'd be like, I think I'd still be like a lot like immature, <laughs> I guess. I think it's hard because, like, you have all your family around you and your cousins, and yeah. you never have, like, time for yourself. Or, like, even if you do, like, you're not disciplined. Like, I wasn't disciplined with my time mm -hmm. by myself, and I wouldn't really think for myself. I would always think, like, oh, what are me and my cousin or my family or friends going to do? I would never think, like, oh, what am I going to do? Like, you know what I mean? I started thinking, like, by myself and, like, for myself since we moved over here. What would think was, like, your – because you've had a major transformation, um, both physically – and mentally, emotionally, I feel like you probably had one of the biggest transformations that I've seen. What was like the one thing that made you like change? Um, when we first moved, I like when we first moved over here. I didn't see it, but like the path that I was going down over there in Laredo was like it was like very like I had nowhere to go. It was just like the same thing every day. Like you know, like waking up late, going to work. And then, like, going to hang out with my friends and eating out and, like, just gaining weight almost every day. And then when we moved over here, I had a, I don't know if you remember, we had a talk. Like, yeah, like, it's time to get on it, like, on my fitness, on my health. And, like, you're, like, I guess my, when I first, when we were first moving over here, I'd, like, I was just, like, hope, like, not, I had, like, hope to change, like, I didn't know what I was going to change, but I just knew something was going to change. And I, like, felt it. And when we got over here, um... I just started like working out every day and not even though I was being unproductive like, like a lot of my day like that that window of my day I was like being very productive and I felt very accomplished and like day by day I just started like it corresponded to like it like rooted to other like places of my life like my mentality I started like doing research on like like just life and like about being a band <laughs> and like I had like out of nowhere I've never had this like I remember we got in an argument, and, mom, and my mom, mom was like, "You don't have like a like a desire to like be like be something." Or like, and I was like, "No," because I truly didn't. Like, I was just living life <laughs> as a kid. You know, you remember? I don't even I remember. remember. Like, you don't like nothing like drives you. And I'm like, no, nothing does. And like mid midway through the year last year, like I just got this burning desire to like, I don't know, like I still have it right now. Like, just be, just push myself every day. That's my uh, New Year's resolution. Just push myself like mentally and physically to like my limits and I want to be like the best version I can. So yeah. That's amazing. Preach. Preach. <laughs> no, and I'm, pr I'm proud of you. Um, we're all part of you. I think, um, you know, if you would have told me that this would have been Jeff a year ago, I would have been like, mm. maybe. But I know. I have my doubts. But, you know, we're, you know, obviously we're all excited to see you. Everybody, I think everybody's gone through yeah, change. Like See, through change. I don't know if you know, like me, Jazzy would not get along last year. And I think it's because she didn't have like a certain, she didn't have a respect for me like she does now. Right. <laughs> what? <laughs> She's like, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know what you're Me and Jazzy about. would go at it. And like, we just like, when Jenny, you weren't here, like it was just like a, um, the trio. They would fight a lot. Like we would fight a lot. And then Jordan would try to be like, make amends. And then Jordan, like when then me and Jordan would fight. It was like like very depressing. <laughs> what depressing? So then you guys had, you guys would fight against each other, and you don't have anybody. And then we didn't have nobody would know it. And then I go to the gym, and I just, that's where that was my someone. Like I remember one time we were at um, I love sushi with mom. Yeah, that was that was one a big and one. And then Jeffrey told something to Jazzy, like, and then she started crying. And then I told something to Jeffrey, and then I just got and mad. then he got super mad. And then 
we came home and Jeffrey locked himself in his room. He, you were crying, right? Oh, fuck. <laughs> why are you why are you like exposing me like that bro? okay i'm trying to tell like the non-exposing story but like you don't like to get some details <laughs> nah, i wasn't crying what are you talking about <clears throat> okay well yeah and then yeah i don't remember everybody was just mad and mom was like this is what i'll take you guys out that's all she said <laughs> every time every time we get into- you were there that day i think that no, but you, didn't, you didn't go to you didn't mom go to love, you didn't go to love sushi but you were like you were here and you were y'all had to was talk he? to me after no i wasn't because mom he was I out of town to i was out of town mom spoke to me over the phone mm-hmm. about it i remember y'all had to talk with me that day i don't remember remember that we were like <laughs> do you remember andy maybe <laughs> i know mom you don't remember that i don't know who are you guys oh i don't know because it was me you Jackie, like i vaguely remember i don't remember, I don't remember everything guys. It, it all started because you got an extra piece of food <laughs> and <I'm> like, <laughs> really yes yes and oh, i like <laughs> <laughs> and I call you a little fat. Ass. He caught, yeah, she caught, he caught but like her. playing around and she took it too hard and, she's and like, then she started crying. Like, how are you gonna cry? You're not even fat, but like, I get it, I get it, I get it. I was fat last year. She, no, you she was so fat. No, Stop it with the fat shaming, please. No. I was baby fat. No, I could, I could fat shame. I was, I'm fat. <laughs> and then you still ate it, right? <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go she around. She was like crying. He was like, let's go around the, around the room real quick. Uh, one lesson that you've learned in the last. Since we've been here, go for a bit. Sorry. Oh, me? Yeah, yeah. One okay. lesson that I've learned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what? Give me an example. Something Any you learned. Like, Narrow it down for mom. me. Something that you've that you learned about yourself that you didn't know last year. That you didn't know a year ago. That I'm like lazier. You love nature. That you're lazier. Yeah, like I'm lazier than like, because I always had like someone like. Like, I guess because I was in cross country, I always had like, like, oh, you have to do it. But mm-hmm. now that I'm on my own, it's like, it's a lot harder. To be disciplined. Yeah. But like, I'm still like trying. But I mean, I see you extremely disciplined. Yeah. I feel like I'm not. I think because I compare myself to how I was and it's like, so. You are really are you disciplined. No, it's school kind school of annoying. I ice cream. Well, I think <laughs> one thing you got to do is like, you need to, like, you know how you want to run that marathon? Mm-hmm. You need to like like book it set a date and then train towards it because yeah. if you don't have like an exact like go in mind goal in mind it's gonna be you're still gonna you're gonna have too much wiggle room yeah yeah that but makes sense. but you're doing i mean yeah I, doing I, I still think you're pretty good like discipline wise you're, you're probably the most disciplined of us. i know yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know like if, you're, if you don't think you're disciplined, like but no that's good that you have high standards for yourself that's pretty good who else well, for me, I feel like I feel like I learned to listen to my body and to listen to like to take care of myself mentally. Like before, I feel like I was like very pressured by like social media to do something or to look a certain way, and I feel like I've learned to like give myself a break, like. Preach. I'm doing what I feel, what I want at my own pace, mm-hmm. without the outside pressure. My lesson is that um, like a little more independent, or more independent, like I don't need, or I do need like my family, but like more like just you guys, and like we could, like we can move anywhere and I'll be fine. Like we can move out of the country and I won't be like sad like last year. Like, I saw that. You promise? <laughs> yeah. I know you mentioned Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii. I want to go to Hawaii. We should move to Hawaii. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'll come. Like, you know, you'll be okay. Yeah. Like, I don't need to be with my friends or anything. Like, I'll be fine. You like learn to be alone. Yeah. Yeah, I think all like I, I don't know if you before like you. in freshman year, remember I would never be lonely. You're like, how do you not get tired of hanging out with people every day? And now <laughs> I'm just like, I, I did not say enjoy that. Enjoy. <laughs> I'm being alone sometimes, even though I'm like alone a lot of times, most of the time. It's because honestly, like when me and mom look at you guys and tell you all, you know, that you need to have a break between some of your friends is because it is true that the people around you have some influence over you, whether you want to or not. It's also like not only the people that are around you, but also the the people that you follow online. Yeah. Yeah. Like whoever you follow on TikTok and Instagram, they're going to play a role in, in establishing these ideas in your head. Um, but also like everything that you listen to and, and read and 
So being by yourself is like a superpower because a lot of people can't be by themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a hard thing to learn. Like we had to go through it to learn it. Mm-hmm. You guys done it twice though. Yeah. No, it was, know, di- it was different for me. In Jersey, like, I don't know. It was like, like it wasn't the same as here. The Jersey you had. In Jersey, I didn't, I didn't like it. Cause I, I like I, Jersey. I felt really lonely. I didn't have any friends. Yeah, I felt lonely. I don't know. I, I made the varsity team. Freshman. 14 years old. Everybody gave his coach a ride. Huh? Did you team him? That was weird. weird. No. <laughs> no. His <laughs> team never walked. But he was just happy because he was playing varsity. You're hating, bro. So Okay, Jazz. One lesson, Jess. Wait, what do I say? Just one lesson, like something you've learned. How to dribble. <laughs> oh my God, you're so funny. <laughs> it could be, it could be like anything. Does it, it doesn't have to be like um, develop, personal development or. Um. That she actually loves me. Mm-hmm. How to get along with your brothers. <laughs> she was okay. telling me the other day that that Jazzy was sending her snaps crying. Mm-hmm. She's like, I miss you. I wish She's like, I wish you were at my game. That's when I was like sad. Because I, I wasn't here. Because I, I don't know. I just, I just miss my family. So. I don't know like the biggest one I learned. But like taking care of yourself is like very imp- like. I, remember mom when I would tell you, oh, like I don't care how I look. Blah, 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 and like, you know. Mm-hmm. But then like, I don't know if you remember that message I sent you like like last year. Like I'm going to start taking care of myself. Cause like, it's not like it's not shallow like to want to look good, you know. Like, but it's like, cause it, it affects the way you think and you the way you act mentally. Like, you're gonna be you know more happy, you're more outgoing, more mm-hmm. confident. Yep. And like that, that's one thing I learned to care for myself. But I also, I was gonna say that the little things matter. Like how you used to always tell me, like the little things do matter. Cause I could see that, and even though I don't <laughs> always do the little things right, I'm I'm aware of it, the situation now. Yeah. They say yeah. like if uh, if you can't see if you can't see that you're stuck, you're, there's no way out. So once you become aware of things, it, you might not be able to make the change right away. But once you're aware of something, eventually it's gonna be too much of a burden to like not to avoid it. So you're gonna figure out, you're you're naturally gonna figure out how to. Yeah, how I to, realized um, that like like this these past couple of months, like I just like hated like everything I was doing it. Uh, what I was doing and how I was doing it. And like, I just couldn't like every day, like it would just like eat me up alive, like working. Like I hated that. Like, and every day I would go and I, and I, would, like, I would like tell myself like, how, how is it that you're able to do it? Like wake up early for like to work, but you can't even do it for yourself. And I hated that. Mm-hmm. Wait, and, I got something. <laughs> oh, that, and don't look at me. Uh, oh. <laughs> Um, that, you guys are going to laugh at this, but I'm more mature than I thought because over there, <laughs> what? No, over go there in go. Laredo, um, me and Jenny would share a room, so I would just leave it up to her to clean it, We you know, and like, but now that I'm over here and I have my own room, I had to clean it and keep it neat because I promised you guys that I would, okay, right now it's not neat, but I, I keep it neat whenever I can. Um, That's I just, decent. Yeah, and I don't know, I guess I just feel more mature in a way, because I kind of like... You have to clean your own room, no one, mm-hmm. no one's doing it for I you anymore. I do my own thing sometimes. Like, like you like seeing your room, your own room looking nice? Yeah, I like having my own little things. I was like you, but for Jordy. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> when we would share a room in the old house, Except I would let him the clean it. Yeah, I would let him clean it. I messed up. <laughs> uh, then there was, and then and there was the the room. The was That's true. <laughs> I would keep my, um, I would keep my bed nice, and then yeah. Jeffrey would just go on it, and I'm like, and I'll be like having like a whole like Plenty crisis. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> that was like the only thing that was mine, and he would like, just go in there and just. That's so rude. I saw a um, meme, not a meme, but like on on my Instagram, uh, I reshared a. A picture of the Sandlot, the, the guys from the Sandlot, the mm-hmm. movie, mm-hmm. and it said, on top of it, it said like, a, there was there was this one day where all your friends, all your friends or childhood friends hung out for the last time, but nobody knew. It was oh, the last I saw time. that one. And that's that really hit me because I'm like, damn, that's true. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember like when um, when I was in 
uh, eighth grade, uh, my parents took us to Puerto Vallarta. It was Ricky, Eric, like all our family, primary family. It was, it was us, the brothers and my parents, right, by ourselves. Yeah. And we went for like a trip for like two weeks. And when we came back, we, I, di I was about to be a freshman, but I didn't know that that was going to be our last vacation together. Mm -hmm. Until you know, many years had passed, and I realized, like, dude, that was the last vacation we had together. But it was very special because we got to, like, me. <laughs> I had a fake ID at the time, which I don't recommend what you guys do. Heck? And I went partying. I went partying with Eric and Ricky. Ricky was dating Evelyn already, so he, he stayed behind. <laughs> he stayed behind. He was so loyal. He was so faithful. He was like, he stayed behind at the hotel. And me and Eric were like. I was Eric. I was Eric Wingman, but he, Eric was, you know, twenty some years old, and I was thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. So, anyways, but going back to it, like, you just never know, like, when you're gonna have these moments, like, how long, how much longer you're gonna be together, or like in the same same space. Yeah. You know, because a few years later, like, or like the following year, for example, Eric Eric went out to Houston to college, and then a, a year and a half later, Ricky went to San Antonio for college. And then by the time they got back, me and, me and your mom were already married. Well, so, with kids. with kids, so we never got to really go on a vacation again, like in our entire lifetime. And it, with the know-how or your, your state of mind today, what would you share with your younger self, your ten, the 10 year old version of you? I don't know, get over yourself. <laughs> ah, <I love>. so <laughs> What? Get over yourself? Yeah, like. It's like, stop overthinking, yeah. like, just shut up and do it. Just, mm -hmm. That's what I just said. Yeah. We get too caught up with, like, what people I think was, of us, about us, right? Yeah. I don't know, it's yeah. so, like, when I, I was little, I was just always, yeah. like, well, ever since I was little, I would just always think in my head, always. And I was always, like, that was, that's me. I was, I was always worrying. Overthinker. And I was I always, think. <laughs> I, I was just, like, I was never, I, like, yeah. there. there. Yeah, in the moment. Yeah. Same. I would tell myself, keep going the way you're going. Oh my god. What? <laughs> I was real smart. You are smart. Oh, I remember I uh, you would wake everyone up at, like when oh, he was a fifth grader. Five in the morning? Oh my god. Not that early. For real? No, I five in the morning. No, it was not that early. Yeah, because we went to school at 10 15 at that time. Mm -hmm. I would not wake up at five in the morning. Nobody would wake up. At Nobody five in the was like. He wouldn't wake up at five, but he would wake up super happy and screaming like for everybody to wake like, up. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Little squeaker, little squeaker like shut the. Made him into school, and now that's me. Like I guess so my he makes me. So she gets it's karma. It's not karma. I have basketball in the morning. You had you had like freaking math in the morning. <laughs> so little math in the morning. And, <laughs> and that's why I'm real smart in math right now, and you're not. <laughs> I'm still passing, aren't I? I don't know. Are you? Yeah, I am. I don't need math anymore. With like a C or something, right? It's five times five. I got it. I'll leave. Five times five is twenty-five. Okay, you're you're gonna edit that out, right? Because no, I hate it when like kids fight. They're so annoying. We're gonna put that at the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> he's calling me dumb because he gets basketball every day. No, I don't. I get there five I've minutes. Been... I get there five minutes before we actually have to like dress up. Like I have to dress up. <laughs> Academic really weapon. Show up up <laughs> exactly. Because it's cold. <laughs> it's really cold in the morning. I'm not gonna show up in shorts. Put your shorts on, your joggers over, your sweater over, and just take it I off right there. I don't really have a bum when I walk in. You just go like, to pajamas. You, okay you go to pajamas. I went to pajamas one time. Like, one time. Like, one time. One time. Yes, all right. Like Dude, Jenny has dressed us off a couple so of times. All right, all right, all right. Let's, go, let's, let's move on. Jazzy, what would you tell your eight-year-old? Wait, how old were you when we moved over there? You're like six years old? I was eight. What was I had my ninth birthday over there, right? Yeah. What? In Jersey. Um, third time when we were 10. To talk back to the bullies that were bullying me. The bubblegum bullies? Yes, sir. Or what is it? Bubblegum? Bubblegum Bubblegum bees. Yeah. Um, speak up for yourself? Yeah, just speak up for myself. Especially for when we move back. I was still being bullied over there, too. I told you that. How about you, Jeff? Um, to my New Jersey self? I don't know. I, I like my freshman year a lot. Because like, I lost a lot of weight, too, there. And to the mic. I lost I lost a lot of weight there too. I lost what forty pounds. Yeah, like and I remember when Christian no forty two, and Christian Guzman like send shouted me video. out. Yeah, yeah. Send video for you. You, got, you got it. Do you have it? Yeah, I do have it. You have to put it right there. Yeah, I got shouted out by the Alpha Land owner. Fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, didn't Jake Paul shout us out? Jake Paul shouted you guys also. We have a lot of videos with different people shouting you guys out. Fred yeah. Contreras. Fred Contreras. Jake, we had a shot with him. Yeah. Tequila shot. <laughs> Into Loom. Into Lou. Um, 
So you, you what, would you, what would you tell yourself then? Just that that be it? I think I I was in the moment like on like Jenny like sorry not, not to, no like no shade, but like I wasn't I was like always in the moment and I was just always just having fun, never thinking of the future like how I told you never care. We moved to New Jersey. I don't know what, what was going through my head. I didn't even want to move. We didn't want to move. No one wanted to move. The last day when we were like driving away, um, we went to go say bye to Louis. Remember? And then me and Jordan were like really thinking about just getting out of the car and running. Oh <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and then. When we get over there, like, we see, like, the city, and, like, it's, like... Oh, yeah. We live in fucking Laredo, and, like, in the middle of, like, the desert. Like, not the desert, right, but it's border town. No shade to Laredo. Didn't we Laredo, see the Statue of Liberty when we drove in? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. that's... I mean, right when you... You guys had the view of the Statue of Liberty from your yeah. room. Yeah, but, like... That big clock? It was surreal. It was, like, really surreal. And we I wish we could have... The only thing is, like, I would, I would tell myself is a, to appreciate like the city more mm -hmm. and like, pay the two dollar fee for the trolley <laughs> what yeah. oh fuck no i jumped i jumped that shit all the time <laughs> nobody pays that so you were the straight up new yorker day one <laughs> didn't even pay for a subway i, I would not pay store. and then when i had practice after school um my mom would make me walk home i was a i was like 14 Loser. walking home mom that's messed up. I, I wouldn't make you walk. walk. Like walk. Yes, I would. I would take the light rail. Well, that's why, because you wanted to take it with your friend. You would <laughs> tell me how to 14, pick you up. I was 14. What are you doing letting me take the light rail? What's that? I was it's kind of like the train, the the train from his school to our... To our it was a straight it's shot. That's why I was like, okay oh, with it. I know what it is. Remember when we took The little it? light rail, when yeah. We went to that, like, the 99 cent store, when we thought it was 99 cents, but it was just... I was sneaking there, too. I took that train. So what was, what was your guys' first impression of the city? I liked it. I wanted to move at first. It looks super cool. I didn't like it anymore. I actually went to it Jersey. Was, it it we was went like to Brooklyn um, first. It was inspiring. That's what the city was yeah. really inspiring. Like, I, I really like Brooklyn. And we would walk like seven miles a day. My fat ass would, would walk <laughs> seven miles every time we go to the city. All of us. We would all walk yeah. somewhere. Do you guys remember when we stayed in Brooklyn for a week? Yeah. yeah. I, liked, I liked the way Brooklyn happened. I just remember the little deli in the corner. Oh, yeah. That was so good. That was so good. I love those chips. The only thing yeah. I didn't like is like we would have to take train, whatever, to train another, and we'd oh, have to yeah. walk, go out, walk like a mile, that was take that train to another train, and then walk out. And like I didn't like that. I hate the subways. Remember yeah. there was that one person that started screaming in the subway. I was very scared. <laughs> I actually miss everywhere. the smelly subways. So. <laughs> I remember we did the mannequin challenge. Oh my god! Don't even bring that up. Oh my! Also the the all the rats everywhere. That's true. There's a lot of rats. Toby remembers the rats. I see rats in They were in Central Park in the subways, too. So what was your favorite memory from New York City? The whole thing. The last day when I ate that big big burger and the milkshake. The black tap burger? Because I remember it because LeBron had just lost the finals to the Warriors. <laughs> you're depressed with mom right i was crying i don't remember i was crying for lebron and you're like why are you crying lebron's not even crying like because i was like fuck kd for like going to the lawyers <laughs> i really had hate for kd i'm sorry like i'm i was like a like a 14 year old that had so much hate in my heart because of kd because oh i wanted God, lebron to win <laughs> <laughs> that you weren't there i don't know you were like you weren't even in new york you were, you were like um i don't know if you were in california i think you were in california in the finals yeah 2017 I think, or was it? No. Yeah, 2017. Yeah, 2017. Mm -hmm. It was June 2017. Yeah, I was probably in L.A. You were, yeah, you were in L.A. And I was watching the finals, like, the last game by myself. And then Katie was just, like, pulling up. He had to pull up against, right in front of LeBron. Dagger. Imagine. That was not fair. Damn. That's so funny. That's so sad for LeBron. And then we went to go eat at Black Tap, like, right at, like, when you got back. And then you were, like, because I wanted to shake and the burger, and they were like huge. It was like a five thousand dollar, five thousand uh, calorie meal. And they're like, the you gotta run. Mom, I mean dad, those big pizzas. I want those big pizzas. Oh, the pizza place down down our house. Crispy was amazing. pizza. Oh, was. crispy pizza. Yeah. I, I want those giant pizzas. Again. No, they were so good. <laughs> no, but back to my story before I was rudely interrupted. Okay, you weren't interrupted. I thought you were. We can really go play one on one right now. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. That's how you should have won. Okay, so then, so then, Jeff. Jeffrey lost. Who wins the Finish it. Finish it. Finish your story. Oh, so I I ordered that the big ass shake and the burger. Three times. And my dad's like, if you order that, both of them, you have to run five miles. And I'm like, bet I'll do it. 
I ate that <laughs> and I drank the shake. We got that back child to- abuse. <laughs> <laughs> I ate that and the shake. We got back to the, we bought. Oh, and also remember that day? Um, I was like 14. There was like a girl trying to hit on me on the street. Yeah. And it, like I was like, what the fuck? Like I was just like in my own world, like thinking like, because every time we would go out, I would like look at the city and like daydream about being like superheroes and shit about like Superman flying over me. Because it really feels like when you're like walking through the city, you see like these big buildings and you're like looking at them and there's like, you just imagine like Superman flying through there. Like that'd be cool. And then... So I, like, I was in my own world, and we were entering the uh, World Trade Center. And then there's a girl, a girl that just comes. <laughs> and she's like, what would she say? And you were, like, next to me. And I, I like, what? What? And I just kept walking, and I just walked away. And then my dad's like, sorry, he's shy. And like, I, I don't even know what the fuck he was talking about. What? Oh, I didn't know You're about him. I mean. I like, 14. Actually, I just turned 15. This was August, right? Yeah. yeah. August. And then he ran five miles on the treadmill. No, so we got home. I used the restroom. And then it was like what, like already like one in the morning, and like okay, let's go run the five miles. I wasn't gonna let him go because he promised he would do it. You gotta keep his word. And I ran ten minute miles, nonstop. Yeah, on it the does. treadmill. And I was like two hundred pounds. What? Five yeah, miles, I have this miles. on video. I have this on video recording. And I would okay back to my story. And I was I kept saying fuck KD, and that really drove me. Like that was really, <laughs> like the hate in my heart was driving me. Like, <laughs> Damn. I fucking hated KD. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm sorry that I, I, have, I had that hate in my heart for him. He's a really good player. But he's a bitch for going to the Warriors. He should have stayed with them. Yeah, he should have. All right. What's well, one of your, around the, around the table, one, one goal for 2023? 2023? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Like that guy. Be a shredded motherfucker. Shredded motherfucker. <laughs> Um, what happened? To I guess just keep improving myself. No, we gotta have like a concrete one, babe. Like a very concrete, like improving what? Uh, everything. Like. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know. Just keep improving. I will right, come back to you. <laughs> I mean, I already know mine. Like, let's let's go. Like let's go like this. That way we don't lose track. Okay. I'm so sleepy. Jenny. <laughs> Run a marathon. Run a marathon. See, that's a very concrete one. Yeah. Run the marathon. Let's go. You got this, Jenny. I know. How how I far? Know, I feel like that doesn't really feel like a goal because I, I know I'm going to do it. So. Well, you, but, I mean, it's still... Have you ran a marathon before? Huh? No. I have. What a loser. Shut up. It's a one mile marathon. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a marathon, Jeff. A marathon is actually I was like I was like four. No, you were like seven or eight. I was seven. But uh, like six. I guess like like an actual goal is just to to be consistent, like create a consistent routine. Because I feel like more than anything, like that's like the really difficult part for me. Because like running, like it's hard, but it's like easy for me to do it now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just yeah. make like make create a consistent routine and like stick to that. Because I feel like once like I'm able to do that, like. Like running and like whatever else I need to do will just like follow. Mm-hmm. What about you, Jordan? Mine is to molest a couple. To what? Come on. <laughs> I heard molest a couple. Molest a couple. <laughs> huh? What did you say? I said I'm gonna list a couple. Oh. oh. I'm gonna oh, list a couple. <laughs> I like molest a couple. <laughs> like, damn, boy. Oh God, You've been watching <laughs> lately. <laughs> I guess I'm watching Dahmer. Dahmer. <laughs> Dahmer. <laughs> okay, mine is to become. I thought I was the only one that heard to it. Make, <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> to make my own um, horror movie short film. To become an actor. To get in the gym. <laughs> Please. <laughs> to He's like gaming on, high. Hey, this is not <laughs> high. To go on a 20 game win streak against Jeff, I'm already like on a two game win streak, I think. It's ending soon. I literally just hit legs. No, and you're... either three or two. It's one of those, three or two. You so just I'm play already every like... time he does legs. Oh, for real, that's what he's doing. <laughs> I can't move. What, ah, else? I almost... what else? He's like, why are you trying so hard? I'm like, we only have an hour. Like, might as well just do your best. What are you talking about? We only have very little time, and you're like, why are you trying so hard? Okay, are you gonna <laughs> I wasn't even trying that hard. I was just Sorry. making every shot. I had another one you may forget. Okay, what was Get in the gym, make a horror movie. We could all make a, like, a little shorts movie. Stop I could be the killer. And to... Just for that, I'm not going to say that. 
and to start making money. But in a fun way that I like to make money. You got this. And I got your back too. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, is it my turn? Yes, your turn, girl. Come okay. on, girl. What you got? <laughs> what you got for us? What you got for us? And I want to be the best player. Since we're moving to Laredo, I have to, like, really prove myself so I can, like, be a starter and hopefully go up to varsity because I do not deserve to be on JV. Um, you can't go over that. Well, you don't deserve to be varsity nor JV. It's, you get what you deserve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. You got to earn it again. Yeah, because, I mean, I earned my spot this year, and I need to, like, prove myself again. But <laughs> yeah. So you say like if, if by the end of the year you're in varsity, a, a starter in varsity, that's your goal? Yeah. I don't know if it'll happen, but just a goal. You can you got this. You can do it. I also have to molest a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna list a couple. <laughs> I'm gonna list a couple. <laughs> you have a speech impediment. I just I'm congested from the middle, so I can't talk. Um like, for my fitness-wise, I want to be at least at 15%. No, I can do better. I, I can, I want to be, like, 10% body fat, 10 to 9. Like, I want to be in the single it's digits. Like, a bodybuilder, is there, no? like a, you're, like, walking on stage at that point? No, and I also want to start getting, like, into running. Like, I want to run at least two miles a day, or, at like, one or two. I'm going to start there. Well, you got Genesis to coach you? And then I'll be better than Jenny, and I could talk shit in bodybuilding, basketball, soccer. I'm kidding, Jenny. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even play basketball, so <laughs> whatever. Um, Do you get you, oh, sorry. But I'm gonna get better at soccer. Watch. I want to oh. finish uh, the real estate course. Like soon. <laughs> it's I've been, been a like, while. I've been um, what's it called? Procrastinating. Procrastinating. But in my defense, I'm work. I was working like forty hours and according to the gym, and trying to like, and I was cooking for myself. That takes a lot of time cooking, and y'all don't mm. see that. No, I do see that. Now that. you guys see. I do that. see that. Hold on, I have I'm one more left. I have um, I wanna end senior year with all A's, but my English teacher is really. I hope she don't see this, but she probably gonna see it. Oh, I don't like my career. Fuck that teacher. bitch! I'll tell you, Jordan. Okay. okay, well he's cool, but like the way he teaches is great. Like he's a cool coach, but he's in like. And she called me out for a plastic bug. She's like, you're in an English honors <laughs> class you. with a plastic bug, and I'm like, What's that? why do you care? It's not that. Like she takes life it's too serious. Deep, yeah. And then and then they were like, what if it was his comfort bug? And I was like, yeah, what if it was? And she's oh like, my god, no! And she was, she's like, well, I wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be telling everybody that. And I was like, what, what are you okay. talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about, you. Okay, never mind. Just What's a plastic bug? I have a plastic bug. It's like a little bug. What if it was his comfort bug? Shut the, tell those kids to shut <laughs> the fuck up. <laughs> but they're joking around. Monkey, little. <laughs> I should. Or oh, would I say finish the real estate course? Like, I want to be done. I want it to be done with the course by May. So, yeah, that's very achievable for me. And fuck it, we're gonna aim high. I want to be wealthier than my dad this year. Let's go. I want. I want to try to make a lot, a lot of money. I don't know how, but I'm gonna do it. But I'm gonna re like. I've been doing researches like a lot. Of, like high ticket. I was telling mom to do high ticket sales because that's basically what she's doing. I've been saying it for years, but your mom has. What's that? You're just selling a product that someone already wants to buy. And you just answer the questions for that product. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I have another goal to add. I and you get, like, get commission off of it. Well, you got a lot of work to do, girls. They're about $3,000. Okay, well, <laughs> that's my goal. Uh, you got work to do. Street, I'll share one of my goals um, for this year. I really want to get uh, into back into writing. I miss writing blogs. One of the first things that I really enjoyed when I st first started posting on the internet, this is back in 2003, 2004, was that I could post my ideas onto the internet. Um, so I would write, I would write every day based on what I was doing, and I would post it on my blog. So I was one, of the, I was blogging since like 2006, 2007, 2008, yeah. and I would actually blog every single day, um, which is crazy to think of it nowadays. But um, that's really what help me I guess different differentiate myself from other like photographers or videographers that I was like sharing information that nobody wanted to share so for me it's like being able to find the time to do research and write based on what I'm thinking about in my mind so what all my all these ideas that I have in my mind find a way to post them on um, whether it's a newsletter or a blog 
which um i want to do so that's my goal for the year have um 50 50 blogs written by the end of the year 50 blogs 50 blogs yeah you can do it yeah and that's uh, oh. um i think we'll wrap it there so um happy birthday <laughs> thank you um, um just wanted to say thank you for being a great inspiration to me to our kids uh to being the best partner um a girl can have and for being always like the light of the family the heart of the family and for um for taking us on all these adventures happy birthday thank you baby the first speech was so good i'm sorry mom that that was good that was good but like the first one that you made was like just better another level i know yeah. so happy birthday dad thank you um, thank you for everything you do for us, for all the adventures you take us on, and all the things we experience because of you. And um, I want to thank you for like having confidence in all of us, because it inspires me a lot. Because sometimes I always um, like second guess my own choices, and I have to like like whenever I'm in school, I always like have something, and I'm always like I don't know, this is like good to turn in. So I always have to ask like two or three people so I could be like, okay, is this good? And then they don't even give me like the correct, like they just say yes, so I could turn it in. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna turn in a crappy paper. Mm -hmm. But even though like it came from me and I know like if it comes from me, it's good. Cause you know, like you have that confidence in all of us. So it just like, it makes me know that. Um, yeah, it reassures me. So I want to thank you for that. And I want to thank you for like the faith I have in you and the confidence I have in you. Cause like, how do you call it? Like let's say those people that like, you can kind of have like faith in them or anything, or like you do have faith in them, but you can't rely on them. Mm -hmm. But like, I know I could always rely on you cause you're very like, um, you know, you, I'm a very reliable person. Yeah. You're a very reliable person. <laughs> thank you. Um, like I said, thank you for being a cool dad. You know, you're very, um, like within everything. Like you're just up, up to date with everything. You're not like, yeah, like that you're like wearing not like, old. um, dickies. Uh, old. <laughs> like, a lot like of you know cool. how those dads were like the no, dickies no. with like the boots, <laughs> <laughs> like those. Um, yeah, thank you for it. No matter what it is, like you have confidence that you'll succeed. So like it kind of. Let's go. Comes back to us, and like now we could do our own thing too. And even if it doesn't succeed, like at least we like doing it. Not saying that your stuff didn't succeed, but like you know, because you like how you said um, that that doesn't matter if people support it or like if it's not like um, something aligned with your life right now. You just you like doing it. So. As long as you want to do it and you're obsessed by it, yeah, you need to do it. Yeah, because then you're gonna slowly. Like the more you say no to your obsessions, right? Mm -hmm. The the faster your soul gets eaten away. So ideally, like if you're really obsessed about something and you say no to it, imagine about imagine doing the things that you're not obsessed about. You that's know, like, that's why people get end up sad and depressed. So you always gotta go for whatever it is that you wanna do. Yeah. And we're gonna support you no matter what. Thank you. And if we don't support you. You know, you got you got yourself to support yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um. Happy birthday. Um. I want to say I'm grateful for everything, all the experiences that we were able to experience because of you. Um, everything you do for us, like when we were younger, I was very grateful that you would play with us, since I know many kids that like, don't have that, and you're always there for us. To, like to support us. Even if you were tired, you would play games with us. Um, gosh. <laughs> what? Um, I'm just like very grateful like for everything. Grateful that like you brought me into basketball because 
If not, I wouldn't. I'd probably be a bum if I didn't have basketball. No. No, I wouldn't be in either of those. I hate those. Um, but yeah, basketball is like the only sport that I actually like st stuck to. Because like, I tried cross, I tried baseball, I tried cheer, gymnastics. You were good at I know, I was good at everything. That's just a talent of mine. But, I'm sorry. Y'all got me off topic. But anyways, I'm just like, I'm like really grateful that you brought me like into basketball. I'm just like grateful for everything that you do. Cause I know you work hard. You obviously stay up really late. Um, and then you take time off so you could spend more time with us. I know I said that like in my original one, so yeah. Okay. I love you. Happy birthday. Thank you, baby. Wow, it's beautiful. And you did fucking like this with us. Yeah. Oh, it's jinx. You owe me uh, five bucks.